the importance of my study is to determine the correlation between the methyl bromide phase out of the United States with the increased spread of a soy-borne pathogen called Macrophomona fasciolina within the strawberry fields of California. California is responsible for about 80% of the strawberries distributed among the nation, and the increased spread of this pathogen is killing those strawberries. Methyl bromide is a chemical fumigant that is widely used across the world, but unfortunately contributes to ozone depletion. Under several policies, this particular chemical has been banned in 2005, however, limited uses have been allowed. In 2015, limited uses will no longer be allowed, and we will be living in a methyl bromide free agricultural environment. Throughout my research, I've come up with three different hypotheses. In the first one, I state that increasing the temperature of dry soils infected with Macrophomona fasciolina will result in an increase in strawberry plant death. My second hypothesis, I claim that crop rotation using crops that are unsusceptible to Macrophomona fasciolina will, during intermediate growing seasons, will reduce plant death. And in my third hypothesis, I state that a uniform irrigation method will result in a decrease of Macrophomona fasciolina viability and overall reduced strawberry plant death. With my first hypothesis, research mm -hmm. and data collection have shown that water potentials are related to overall soil temperature and that this particular pathogen has thermophilic qualities, so it likes warmer temperature soils. By warmer temperature, I'm talking about 30 degrees Celsius as opposed to 25 degrees Celsius. It seems that the thermophilic qualities of this particular pathogen make it easier to live in these hotter environments, whereas other microorganisms don't like to live in these soils. So the competition for survival is a lot less. For my second hypothesis, I state that crop rotation is an important part of reducing the spread of this particular pathogen. It seems that this pathogen likes to live in the upper regions of the soil, and in lower depths, it's not found as easily. By using crops that are unsusceptible during intermediate growing seasons, meaning during seasons that are not as important, that don't produce these viable crops that we need, will help to reduce the overall spread of this pathogen by removing the top layer of the soil and by using the soil with, that is already infected with this particular pathogen. No real host crop has really been specialized, so it seems that there are no specific crops that are more easily infected. Different fumigate alternatives have been used and have been tested. The most popular one is that of sodium, which produces results very similar to methylbromine. It also seems that inoculation type is an important aspect of how this crop or how this pathogen is spread and the survival survival of it. The very most common one is microsclerodia, which is in lack of a better word, the seed of the pathogen, and it is most easily spread. The other types are crowns and storms of the flower that have been infected are and then are embedded embedded into the soil. My third hypothesis states that a uniform irrigation method is better for controlling the spread of this pathogen. By that I mean as opposed to a drip irrigation treatment method, it is better to use a furrow irrigation method that will more evenly coat the surface of the soil and help to control the spread of this pathogen, especially when this treatment is applied throughout the growing season as opposed to just before it. Or just after. In conclusion, I like to state that the effects of this particular pathogen will turn into a very strong problem for the economy of California. The distributing amount of strawberries within this state are very high. The overall strawberry industry is about $3.2 billion. By decreasing the spread of this pathogen, we will help to not only improve the con economy, but to help in the decrease of the spread of this particular horrible.